Okay, let's let's continue with the lecture. Okay, so like I was saying, the periodicity is the number of time steps it takes to return to a particular state. So if you move from maybe a sunny day, okay, and you want to find how long will it take, how many time steps will it take for you to return back to a sunny day? Okay, that is what we refer to as a periodicity. So in um okay so let's say we have this example here i'll use this um, chain to demonstrate so if i move from state zero and i want to find how long will it take for me to return to state zero is this a matter of moving from zero counting the time step one okay then two this gives us two and two should be greater than one once your time steps k is greater than one we say that the, the chain is what periodic okay there is another movement which we can consider that will be one two three and four okay so in here we have k to be four four time steps to return back to the state world to the state zero good now if k is less than four uh, it's not greater than one, then we say that the state is aperiodic. Okay, so you take note of that. Good. Now, we want to go on to the main issues, things we haven't looked at in class so far. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, this example on uh, periodic states, as I was trying to look for. So, we have uh, periodicity of this uh, model here is two, okay? Because moving from zero back to zero, using this part, using state one will be what? One, two, okay? But if we're going to use state two as your uh, steps, then that will be one, then we have two, then you have from two to one, that's three, and then we have what? Four, okay? So the periodicity there gives us what? Four. Very well. Yes, that we also want to look at a steady state uh, analysis of a system. Now, like I was saying earlier, when it comes to steady state, we are asking how long will a customer remain with a particular brand? Okay. Yes, we want to look at the chance, the probability in the long run after 20 years, after 30 years. Uh, are we still likely to have this customer being what on our system? Okay, uh, that's what we're talking about. So, for example, we have, uh, yeah, to do this, all we need to do, let me first explain the equations here. Okay, so it says that recall that the state probability, which is the probability of finding the Markov chain as state i after k step is given by this. Okay, good. Now, in the long run process, what we are saying is we need the probability distribution of the process as the limit of the, the initial transitions, okay, approaches infinity, okay? That is what we are talking about. This is what we refer to as well, the steady state or the states, the equilibrium or stationary probability uh, distribution of the process, okay? Good. Now, how do we go about this? Is this a matter of solving two equations? Okay, the two equations which we'll be solving are pi is equal to pi p, and then summation of your pi i should be equal to what? One. Okay, it's very simple. So we solve pi is equal to pi p, and then the summation of pi i is equal to one. And in the solution, if this is a three by three system, you're going to use two of the equations from here, from this equation, from this system here, and then you come and take this equation, which is the sum of all probabilities, should be equal to one to enable you to solve. Okay, so let's take uh, another example. Sorry, an example on this. So we have this previous example, which is a uh, the computer device being in the state one, blah blah blah. So 
uh, we are asked to find the steady state distribution of the process. Good. Now to solve it, like we said, all we need to solve is to half pi p, okay, is equal to what? Pi. Okay, that is what we go to solve. So pi p is equal to pi. And usually we try and uh, write this one, okay, in the transpose form, but it really doesn't make any difference. So what we do here is we write the, we multiply the matrix, okay, and rewrite it as a set of equation. So it's going to be pi one, let me use my marker here. Yeah. So when multiplying, you have this, okay, which will be pi one, okay, it's written down there, times what? 0 0.8 plus, then you multiply, okay, this and this. So it should be uh, pi two, okay, then times 0 0.4 is equals to what? Is of course the first probability there, which is what? Pi one. So that gives us the first equation, okay? Then we do same to obtain the second equation here. So that will be pi one times 0 0.2 like that, okay? And then pi two plus pi two times what? 0 0.6 that will give us the second equation here. Then, like I said, this is a two by two matrix, two by two equation. So we're going to take this other equation, okay, into consideration when solving it. So we have pi one plus pi two is equal to one, okay? And doing so implies from this equation, we can tell that pi one, okay, pi one is equal to what? One, sorry, this pi one, so one minus what? Pi two, okay, good. So if we are to substitute what we've just had here into any of these equations, just one of them, okay, we can substitute it into the first equation and then solve for what? And solve for pi two. So do that for me. Substitute the third equation into the first equation and then solve for pi two and uh, subsequently pi one as well. Yeah, are we done? We are on it. Okay.
Yeah, hello. Are you still not done? Interest is rising. Hola. Oh, what do you do? I'm an investment banker. Oh, oh. wow. Oh, okay, maybe you can answer a question. Uh, how big is your deposit? Oh, interest is rising. You know, the longer you keep it in, the bigger your reward. It collapses. Okay. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> Yeah, hello. Hello, guys. Yeah, yeah you, you've kept longer. Okay, okay. So let's let's continue from here. It appears you are you're keeping overly uh long okay so when you substitute uh pi pi one which is one minus pi two here let, let me do this on the board here it's going to be what zero point point eight then we have one minus what pi two okay it's plus 0 0.4 pi 2 is equals to what is equals to 1 minus um oh sorry um so let's make it yeah equals to 1 minus what pi 2 here this 1 minus pi 2 here okay so that should give us, um, when we expand, this should give us 0 0.8 minus what? Pi to 0 0.8, then plus what? 0 0.4 pi to is equals to what? One minus uh, i'm not seeing this here okay yeah so one minus what pi two okay good so essentially 
uh, it means we have pi two here, we have pi two here, we have pi two here. So we can move this 0 0.8 to the other side, which means it will be one minus 0 0.8, which is 0 0.2 there, okay? And on this side, we have um, 0 0.4 minus 0 0.8, okay? So that will be negative 0 0.4 pi two. Okay, so and we have a pi two here. So when we bring it, it will be plus, positive, so plus pi two. Okay, which means that on the left side of the equation, we have 0 0.6 pi two is equal to what? Zero, zero point two, okay? Now dividing both sides by 0 0.6, to divide this side by 0 0.6, it will give us pi two to be, this will go here one over what? One over three, okay? Very good. I hope it's clear to everyone. I hope it's clear to everybody. I hope solution is clear. I hope the solution is clear. Yes, yes, sir. Very good. good. So once we have pi two to be one over three, we can substitute it into any other equation. We said uh, pi one is one minus pi two. Okay. Uh -huh. So one minus pi two will give us 